Dixie Decker here, Queen of Student Housing, and this is another one of my checks and balances for student housing. And more than that, it's checks and balances for the best sleep possible that I can have. So what does that mean? Okay, so one of the things about student housing that's really cool but also gets a little stressful is we only move people in and out three times a year. End of May, end of June, end of July. So all my inventory is either renewing and staying or turning over. For me, it's about 50% turns over each summer, which means they graduate, they change uh, from four roommates to two roommates, whatever that case is. So the parents are the ones that make sure my house doesn't have damages and they're the ones that make sure it's clean so that when their kid leaves, I can move the next batch in the next day and they're gonna get all their security deposit back. But I, always evaluate risk and I like as little of it as possible. So the checks and balances for me and also to cover my staff from any headaches because they're the ones turning these over now is the following things. I love checks and balances for everything. I just built the whole business off of no one doing everything. So when we schedule a move out, we always have a hall guy on call for the day of move out. So that's three times a year for us. Whether he does anything for us or not, he's on call and we pay him whether he does anything or not. Okay, the reason for that is if someone fails and leaves something behind, we can remove it instantly to not hold up our process. Secondly, I always hire a cleaning crew for every single property that's moving out, whether we need it or not. Most of the time, the parents have cleaned so well, the cleaning lady calls and goes, are you sure you want me to clean? And we're like, we're paying you anyways because we already occupied your time, go ahead. Touch up paints are scheduled to go in right after cleaning and we hire college kids to do that. We hire four groups of two because we know 50% of them aren't gonna show up and they go do our touch up paints. Then my staff only has to make one round at the end of move out day to make sure everything looks nice. We always schedule carpet cleaners for nighttime so that they have time to dry out overnight. Whether it needs it or not, we clean the carpets, period. Sometimes they call us and go, they're still wet, the tenants clean them. Then we have to pay them a fee for showing up, but we don't pay for the full cleaning. Okay, the following day, this is the day we go spray for bugs in every single property, because no one's living there yet. And we don't want to spray for bugs before people move in and before cleaning shows up, because they clean all that off the baseboards and everything. So we want bug, bug spraying to go in right before the tenants move in, and, and it's gonna stay put to you know, do what it's supposed to do. So I only let people move in after noon on move-in day. That gives us the morning for our carpets to dry if they needed cleaned. So the deal for me is, my checks and balances is, even if the student was 100% successful, I have all those things lined up for the what ifs. And even if it's not needed, we pay those people because they took time out to dedicate to us even if we didn't need the service. So that's a big thing for you to sleep really well, for your team to know they're gonna be successful, for the next batch of tenants that are moving in to definitely be able to move in on time. So I'm always hedging my bets for success.